All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Makakudash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule impeccably well. Shalom to the hopeful elect, pushing his truth in sincerity throughout the four corners of the globe in the sincere hopes of being delivered in these last days. All right, this is Bobby Akadan from the GMS England branch. This will serve as a brief video based upon this um this article that you see here on the screen and this will take you from time.com or timemagazine.com and it says um the u.s capital is filled with racist depictions of native americans it's time for them to go all right and as you can see here we have this picture that shows an Edomite um, murdering a Native American. And basically, you know, throughout, throughout the, um, the US Capitol, you have, you know, many of these sculptures, images around that show you basically the taken down and the destruction of the Native American people, who we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, are the tribe of Gad, okay, spoken of in the scriptures. And just to begin this lesson, you know, I have a, I have a few scriptures loaded up, but I want to start off with Genesis 39 and um, verse 19, all right? Because all the way in the book of Genesis, at the beginning, all right, these things... That you see happening throughout the four corners of the globe, all right, were already spoken of through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, okay. And you know what? Before I get that, let me get um, Isaiah. What's that? Isaiah forty-six and ten, just to show you that everything is pre-programmed through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, what we're seeing upon the face of the earth is the will. Of the heavenly father Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai playing out okay and his will and what he was going to do was already decided from the very beginning all right and this proves that this is Isaiah 46 and verse 11 and it says sorry verse 10 and it says declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure all right so declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Now, when we go back to Genesis um, chapter 49 and uh, verse 19, it says here, Gad, a troop shall overcome, but he shall overcome at the last. Okay. Now, who was that troop that overcame Gad? That troop was Esau Edom. Okay. And they're known, you know, as Caucasians you know, the so-called white man, all right? And this is a image depicting that troop on the left being Esau, Edom, overcoming Gad, all right? On the right-hand side, all right? Which is spiritual in itself. When they invaded, okay? When they came to, 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 to the Americas, man, okay? Because Gad was already there. The Native American Indians were already on the land of America, okay? Christopher, Christ, Christopher Columbus didn't discover you know, the land of America, all right? How can you discover something when there's a people that are already there, okay? So this is a perfect depiction, all right, of this coming to pass, all right? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, this has happened, okay? So the Bible is a true book. These prophecies that are written in the scriptures are real, all right? These are, these are you know, this is the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, playing out upon the face of the earth, man. Okay? Now, let me scroll down. It says, um... Right, check this out. It says, one of these sculptures carved in 1826 to 1827 by the Italian artist Enrico Cusicchi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a gruesome scene showing the explorer Daniel Boone stabbing a Native American warrior. Another warrior lies dead beneath their feet, 
filling the entire bottom of the rectangular panel. Soon after the work was installed, then rep Tristan Burgess sarcastically commented that it, that, that it very truly represented our dealing with the Indians, for we had not left them even a place to die upon, all right? So that tells you how, you know, gruesome and uh, brutal, you know, the slaughter was upon the Native American Indians, man. All right. Now, let me get, let's get John 10 and 10. Okay. Because Esau is a bloody man. And we'll probably get that scripture afterwards. So this is John chapter 10 and verse 10. It says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, all right? Now, who does that remind you of? That reminds you of Esau Edom, all right? He's the thief, okay? He's the one that came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And that's exactly what he done to the natives. And not only the natives, okay? He done it onto you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, man, okay? Raped, robbed, and murdered our people. And that's why judgment, all right, is going to re re recompense upon him in these last days, man, all right? And we're in that transition period of, um, of, of of kingdoms, you know, being translated, all right? And if I remember, I'll get that scripture as well. And it says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly, okay? And that's Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai represents that life, okay? Because he gave that sacrifice, all right? So we could actually have this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of you how about Shim Yao Shai in these last days. If it wasn't for that sacrifice, we will be totally through. All right? We will be totally through as a nation of people, man. And there wouldn't be a remnant that would be woken up in these last days in order to carry on the legacy, so to speak. Okay? But it was you how about Shim Yao Shai's will that an elect, a remnant, would be woken up in these last days, okay? In order to wake up, you know, the rest of the elect that were ordained from the very beginning, from the foundations of the earth, in preparation for the return of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Okay, the second coming. So I'll read that one more time. The thief cometh not both, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. All right, so that's what's going to happen when Yahweh Shai comes back, man. We're going to have that life, which we have. We have the life, all right, because we have this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay, and that is the beginning you know, of that life, all right, and them rivers of living water flowing through our stomach, okay, as it says in John 7 and 38, but we're going to have it more abundantly when we're completely changed through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shim Yao Shai in the twinkling of an eye, okay, and we're going to be perfected, okay, through Yahweh Shai, man, all right, so let's go back and let's go to um, Genesis 9 and uh, verse 6. And it says, whoso sheddeth man's blood. Now, who sheddeth, you know, man's blood when he came to the shores of the Americas and joined the transatlantic slave trade? He saw Edom, all right? He shed our blood, okay? He shed our blood, you know, he defiled the land, okay? So there's got to be a recompense for that, and we'll get that in numbers after. So whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of the Mosai made he them, all right? So if you shed a man's blood, then your blood has to be shed, man. All right, and that's gonna that's actually gonna happen when Yahweh Shai comes back, man. All right, and that's why the Lord said, you know, wait, wait ye upon me until I rise up to the prey, man. We gotta wait upon Yahweh Shai. All right, this is not about us, you know, taking matters into our own hands, you know, and I'm um, getting carnal. All right, because the scriptures say that a carnal mind is enmity with the Most High. All right, so we're 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 strictly playing a spiritual um um a spiritual role okay, in these last days until our Lord comes back, okay, we are remaining spiritual through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, this is not about getting carnal, okay, we have to play out um, the movie as Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai has given us the script, so whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of the Most High made he them, all right, now let's get Numbers 35 and verse 33, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. All right, so Esau's blood, all right, will have to be shed. Okay, and that's why Yahweh is coming back. He's coming back to destroy 
all right, the nation of Esau, Edom, all right, after they serve, all right, their, um, their punishment of slavery for 1,000 years in the kingdom, okay, that must indeed come to pass. And then pursuing to the book of Obadiah, you know, the tribe of, of Esau, Edom, all right, will be done away with and will be no more, all right, because he is a wicked and violent and bloody man, all right, and let's get that, because Esau has shed much blood upon the earth, not only of you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, but just in general upon the other nations too, but the judgment is coming down upon him because he touched the the, the, the apple of Yehobah Shim Yahushai's eye, okay, all right, let me see if I can find that bloody man. I believe it's in the book of Psalms somewhere. All right, here it is. Um, this is Psalms chapter 5 and verse 6. And it says, Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing, which means lies. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. All right, so the Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. And that's Esau Edom, okay? Because again, he has shed much blood and he is a deceitful individual. How much covenants and agreements has he made with the tribe of Gad and broken them? How many times has he given them land, okay? Has he given them, you know, particular water fountains to, to, to occupy and then stripped and taken it away from them and backtracked on the things that he said? He's done it many, many a times, man. All right, you have Gad, you know, protesting, you know, throughout the years, you know, asking, um, you know, for um, for rights, asking for clean water, asking for, you know, reservations where they can, you know, stay and lay their head, you know, asking for, you know, particular areas of land where they can hunt and sustain themselves. But Esau Edom, you know, he rejects it, man, a, a vast majority of the time. Okay, there's a lot of there's a lot of foul play, and um, you know, demonic demonic um works that are happening when it comes to Esau, Edom, and Gad, okay, he, he breaks everything that he says, and let's get into that right quick in Psalms 55, and um, we'll start from, we'll start from verse 20, Psalms 55 and verse 20, and it says, he that have put forth, he have put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him, that's right, because when he came to the lands of America, you know, Esau posed as if he was peaceful, as if he was coming, you know, to learn, you know, he was coming to, um, um, you know, be in union with Gad, all right, but that didn't last for too long, man, because Esau had um, intents, all right, that he wanted to fulfill, all right, which was really, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Shai. again, when we go to uh, Genesis 49, it tells us that Gad will be overcome by the troop, man, all right, not make peace with them, all right, so that was biblical prophecy. So he had put forth his hands against such that be at peace with him. All right, because God, you know, they were at peace with Esau, Edom, man. They were teaching him certain things. All right, so he could sustain himself, you know, when you go into the history and whatnot. But Esau turned around, you know, like the backstabber that he is, and he, he turned against them. All right, and started to kill them and murder them. All right, started to murder them. All right, he had broken his covenant. All right, and to this day, he is still breaking that covenant all right and covenants that he has made with gad all right and there's plenty of videos that you can see online of you know um court trials you know of the hypocrisy of esau edom okay him backtracking upon his words here it is you've actually come into a land that was already occupied you've taken over that land okay and then you know you want to tell that people what they can and can't have that's the devil all right you can't cut it any other way that is the devil man all right, verse 21, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. And that's why you can't trust Esau Edom, man. All right, you can't trust Esau Edom because the words of his mouth are smoother than butter. He will tell you what, you know, them tantalizing words that you want to hear. All right, he will tell you certain things, you know, to calm your spirit, but then he will overthrow you. All right, when the time is right in his eyes, man. And that's what Esau is all about. That's why it says in the, in the book of Romans uh, chapter 9 that um, the wicked are a vessel of wrath that were fitted to destruction. They specialize in destruction. They specialize in, in, in um, you know, taking over nations and bloodshed. They specialize in these things. They specialize in death, all right? That is the, that is the left-hand side of the heavenly father, Yehobah Shem Yahushai, all right? That is the sword 
of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, as King David said, man. All right, the wicked which is thy sword. Okay, so you 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 know you should expect these things, man. Okay, they were made for a purpose. They were made for destruction, man. And it says his words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords, man. And going back to this image that they had on this article, all right, you can see. Again, he's murdering that Native American Indian, man. All right, that's those drawn swords. After a while, you know, he, he drawn these swords. All right, they killed, you know, little babies. Okay, they killed, you know, young children. They killed women. They killed the men. All right, there was, there was, a, there was a heavy slaughter. All right, there's even images of them um, killing um, the, the, the buffalo. All right, so that the, the Native Americans couldn't eat. All right, I believe it was buffalo, man. If my if my mind serves me well, so the Americans couldn't eat, Native Americans couldn't eat Gad, and um, you know they basically starved them out. So Esau's wicked, man. All right, Esau is wicked. He's a very wicked individual, man. And judgment is going to come upon him in these last days. Now, regarding you know these statues and whatnot, you also had this one right here. I believe a few weeks ago it was pulled down. All right, the Theodore Roosevelt statue, as you can see here on the screen, you can see a Native American Indian on the left, and you can see um, a Judah on the right, which represents, you know, the two kingdoms, Judah and Ephraim. All right, Judah and Israel. And this was pulled down, all right? So Esau is basically doing a makeover, so to speak, on his kingdom. All right, he's putting down all of these, um, you know, statues, paintings, you know, all of these um things that have basically, how can I put it, put timepieces, you know, throughout his rulership and show the destruction and the triumph of his rulership. All right, now he's pulling them down because he's getting you ready for that new world order. All right. That's why he's doing a, you know, a house cleaning, so to speak. And it also goes into that shameful spewing. OK, because as long as these things stand, you can always point to these things and say, look, you're the devil. Look what you did here. Look what you did there. He wants to remove all of that now. And he wants you to join, you know, his one world religion, man. All right. His new world order. And that's what it's all about. All right. They ain't taking these down because, you know, they care about the people or they don't want to continue to you know, hurt the people or anything of that, you know, kind of nature. They're taking it down because there's a greater agenda at hand, all right? But what he doesn't understand is that he's going to be destroyed, all right? And you can't make people forget about this um, cruel and disgusting um, acts that you've done throughout the years. Now, this is um, Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 7. I have seen servants upon horses. Now, who are those servants that were upon horses? That was Esau Edom. Because his, his true estate, all right, is to be a slave. His true estate is to be, um, you know, a servant unto us, all right? That's his rightful place until we're done with him. And then he's going to be destroyed pursuant to the book of Obadiah once again. So I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Now, those princes walking as servants, that is the 12 tribes, man. That is you Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are the princes of the power, man, walking as servants upon the earth, okay? And that's what it is, okay? That's what it is through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai. But many of our people don't see that, all right? They still see themselves as servants, all right? Because they're void of this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. But we have the light. That's how we identify with greatness. We identify with Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, man, because the Lord has given us the gift of faith. Okay, but like I said earlier, this is a transition of kingdoms. Now let's get um, Sirach chapter 10 and verse 8. Because at the end of the day, for all that Esau has done, there's going to be a recompense. There's going to be a payback, man, that he's not going to be able to, um, to avoid. All right, so this is Sirach chapter 10 and verse 8. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries and riches got by deceit everything that esau has in his establishment in his kingdom all right has actually been gotten by deceit okay and i remember there was a documentary that they had years ago on channel four over here in the uk and they basically said you know if there was to um actually you know um give back all that what they have stolen 
if they was to actually pay the slaves, you know, an hourly rate for all of the labor and all of the pain and all of the death, you know, that they incurred, they said that the whole um, system would collapse within a day, all right? Something, you know, around around that time period, they said everything would just collapse, all right? They said it's impossible to actually pay back, all right, the slaves for the labor and for the pain, you know, that they actually incurred. They said it's impossible. They said society would break down, okay? And you're not going to tell me that that's a staple in, um, you know, the history of the earth, okay? That is a staple upon the earth, man to transatlantic slave train, the children of Israel going down under Esau Edom. That is a huge staple upon the face of the earth, man. All right. And that's why they said that on that program. They said it's impossible to pay them back, man. You can't say that about any other event, you know, upon the face of the earth concerning our people, man. Okay. And that's because we're the children of Israel. That's because we're the Lord's chosen people. Okay. And we had to go through that. All right, that was all set up through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. We had to go through that. So Esau can't pay us back, man. All right, we don't want your, your, your reparations, man. They keep talking about these reparations, <laughs> but they never pay the reparations, man. You know, we don't want your reparations, man. All right, we want you enslaved, man. We want you enslaved. And in the kingdom, all right, you will indeed be enslaved when our Lord and our Savior Yahweh Shai makes his return. You are going to be enslaved, man. You're going to be put back in your proper position. You are the basis of men, as it tells you in uh, Daniel's 4 and, se and what, 17 or 20, all right? You are the basis of men. So it says, um, because of unrighteous dealings, injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And that's the time that we're currently living in now where the kingdom, all right, is being translated, man, all right? And that's why all of these things continue to rise to the surface man to remind you all right that the children of israel through the spirit and power of yahweh all right are about to um overtake you know you edomites man okay what did it say let's go let's go to it again in uh, genesis 49 all right we're about to overcome all right god is about to overcome all right he's gonna get he's gonna get his um his revenge, so to speak, on Esau Eden through Yahweh Shai. Okay? So this is um, Genesis 49 and verse 19. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. And we're at the last right now because we're at the ending of this current kingdom, the end of the world, man. Okay? So with that, Lord willing, um, this lesson was edifying. And until the next one, I'll say Shalom.